It is a really great pleasure to introduce uh, our next keynote uh, speaker, Matthias Weske, and it's a great pleasure for two uh, reasons. Uh, so one reason is it's very symbolic. I'm leaving as chair, he is taking over as chair, so I think that makes uh, this setting nice. He will also talk about his ideas and plans and how the conference will be organized in the future years. The other reason why this is really a pleasure is that we already know each other, I think, uh, tw 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what some people do not know, he was also for a very brief uh, period also working in Eindhoven mm -hmm. uh, before <laughs> he moved to HPI in, in Potsdam. Matthias is very well known uh, in this area. He has been uh, a very active member of our community since a very long time. He was also one of the founding uh, members of the steering committee. He also organized the second BPM conference. So the first one was in Eindhoven, the second one was in Potsdam. Yeah. So the mining people underneath us, they will try to kind of find the rule. When do you become a chair of the steering committee? Uh, yeah, so. Joseph has some years to go before he's, uh, he's in the next in line. So as I said, Matthias has been a very uh, active researcher in this area. He started working on flexibility in the beginning and then brought it over time. He was the first person to write the real, a real comprehensive uh, textbook on BPM. He was also the first one to uh, make a massive open online course in the BPM space followed by, by several uh, others. So that shows a bit that he has a uh, vision to see what is uh, uh, important. Uh, he also educated, I think, very good PhD students, leading to all kinds of interesting products. So for example, he is one of the co-founders of Signavio, which is like a spin-off uh, of his group. And I do not want to take more time away from him, and I propose that we give a very warm welcome to our new chair. Yeah, uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Will for his very nice and uh, very kind words. Um, so good morning, everybody. I'm really uh, very happy to be here. I'd also like to thank the PC chairs for inviting me, for giving me the opportunity to, um, to reflect a little bit on BPM as a broad discipline, and not only like to reflect on the discipline, but also on the implications uh, to our conference series in general and uh, to the plans for BPM 2018 in, in particular. And um, even on the first slide, you see some reflections already, so that might be a good start. Um, this is a broad topic, so um, allow me please to start uh, broad maybe very broad. Um, a while back, I, was, um, uh, I found a very, a very nice illustrated guide towards a PhD by Matt Maiden. Uh, I'd like to follow these ideas in the first uh, part of the talk a little bit. And um, I'd like you to make together with me a little mind experiment. Now assume that in this, in this circle, there is all of, uh, of human knowledge uh, entailed. So everything that we know as humans is in this, in this circle. Um, when you are young, when you go to elementary school, you cover the, let's say, fundamental part, the basics of knowledge. This is where you learn general things. After you finish high school, you have extended this knowledge in different areas, so basically in all areas, so it's a general uh, way of, um, let's say, um, having new knowledge in different areas. When you go to university, when you go to your bachelor program, I mean, it's uh, changing a little bit because you're focusing on one topic. You could study um, natural sciences, physics, biology, management, or computer science, if you like, and then the picture changes a little bit because you have this um, beginning of a specialization. You learn also general things, but you also have a little bit of a, of a generalization. Um, when you then decide to go towards a master, uh, master thesis, or uh, when you finish continue with your, with your master studies, we expect something more specialization. So you go a little bit more narrow, but you you slowly approaching what we know in this area. So you extend your knowledge in terms of that, and it looks a little bit like that. And this is typically the the, the point in time when people. Um, enter, um, let's say, some research group. So some of the master graduates decide, well, I would be interested in pursuing a, a PhD in different fields, might be in also in computer science. And this is the point in time 
when the advisor asks them to, you know, you should read everything that is in this area. You know, the area is broad, so you, you, should, you should focus on a, a sub-area, and in this sub-area, you should read everything that you can get your fingers on. You should read the books, you should read the journals, you should um, read the conference papers, and you should read the journal paper, um, also the workshop papers, and you should know everything in this area. That's an important start for a research career, everybody in this, in this field. So that brings you basically to the edge of what we know. Then it's the time to somehow uh, start pushing. Uh, because you have, um, you know now everything, you are the expert in this narrow field, and now, the, now the, it's the point in time where you try to find new challenges, open problems, you look at an approach with um, strong assumptions, so you are able to relax some of the assumptions um, and still have uh, valuable results in this context. So this is the time when the, when the pushing starts, and when you devise an algorithm, when you, when you prove a property of a system, you're pushing. When you implement a system, when you devise an architecture, when you do an empirical study, when you interview people, you, you push against this border. You push for a couple of years when you do it in computer science, and if you are, um, well, if you're lucky, if you work hard, something like this happens. And that's your PhD. So you, you pushed forward what we know, and this is basically your PhD. In order for that to happen, you have, <coughs> you have to convince a number of people, and I uh, um, always, let's say, uh, always discuss with my students, so who's the first person you need to convince that this is a PhD? My group members know that, I like to hear, so what's the first person? If it's a supervisor? Well, it's yourself. You, know, you start with yourself. You must be convinced that what you did is actually, uh, is actually worth of a PhD. It's a new, let's say, it's a new scientific result. It enhances the knowledge of what we know. And when you are convinced yourself, you can convince your supervisor. And you convince, together with your supervisor, the evaluators and the committee, and then you defend, and then this is, a, this is your PhD. At that point in time, you're the expert, really, in this field, in this narrow field, and it, fills, it has filled your, your head for the last couple of years. Sometimes it has filled your heart as well. You feel very strongly about the topic. So your view of the world is something like this. See, really, in this narrow, in this area, you're the expert, and you think this is this is really what what's important, and this is your view of the world. When you they continue your career, you make a postdoc, or you um, do work for a company, maybe you start a company. Um, slowly, you begin to somehow zoom out a little bit and see the bit of a broader picture um, of what of what you have achieved, and then it looks something like that. So still, you, can be, you are proud and you can be very proud of what you achieved since you have the overall, let's say, overall picture. Um, you are the, a bit more broad-minded and you see what you have achieved and you can be very proud of it even though it's a just a very little thing. Um, <coughs> we as a BPM community have been very successful in educating or attracting excellent, talented young researchers um, over the years. Um, and Basically, all of them went through a process that I was just uh, highlighting a little bit. Um, and I'd like to mention some of those, because some of those I was in the room, I mentioned um, some of those for which I either been a supervisor or I've been involved in the evaluation committee. Will has already mentioned that a little bit, so that's a nice, uh, let's say, nice say from Will as well. So there was this gentleman working on interaction petri nets, uh, which is Gero Decker, who's now the CEO of Signavio. And what he did, he did something like like that, right? So this is the, the dent that Gero produced in the knowledge when working on um, interaction petri nets, choreographies, and people for core, and topics like this. Marcello La Rosa took a look at configurable process models, looking at CEPCs and how to, how to be able to, to configure these, let's say, variant-rich process model to specific variants. So that's another dent that has been produced. Anne Rosinat was working uh, in Will's group on conformance checking, and um, without her, we wouldn't be talking about conformance checking today, so she also was doing another dent here. Ahmed Awad, former member in the group, and now is a professor in um, Egypt in uh, Cairo, worked on process compliance. And you know who this gentleman is, Matthias Weidlich, introduced behavior profiles as an abstract representation of the behavior um, uh, of a process, and Andreas Scholti worked on um, runtime prediction 
uh, using stochastic models and to these people in the room. So uh, thanks for this position as well. But actually what you did is you, you advanced, of course, you know that the state um, of the art in science. Um, but it's not only PhD thesis that extend what we know, uh, but it's also this conference. And if we look at uh, the VPM conferences over the year, I think VPM made quite some impression on this, on this circle, if you want. So if you know, but now we need to make a, some kind of time uh, stamp on this because as we know, so this uh, with the, or the knowledge of the world is somehow getting bigger and bigger. Um, so we should always like um, say that this circle is the circle of 2017. A bit, a bit more precise, it's a circle of last week. We started with the doctor consortium, though the doctor consortium um, they didn't make a lot of an impression because the doctoral consortium, the student did excellent, with excellent, uh, let's say, talks and also very intensive discussion and feedback. But the doctoral consortium is more on this, on this pushing phase. So, um, but then we had the, the workshop. The workshops made the first impact and the talks yesterday made another impact. So we can say have also the first little, let's say, extensions that we created um, on Monday and, and yesterday as well. Once BPM 17 is done, we have something like that. So we have covered, BPM 17 has covered a part, has let's say, extended the knowledge in this area. And basically it sits on top of what we did uh, last year in Rio, what we presented there, the papers and the workshops we presented there, sitting on top of what we did discussed in Innsbruck and in um, Haifa, uh, Eindhoven, and so forth, until we said it, this conference series started in 2003. So I think we can, as a community, be very proud of what happened over the years. This um, circle would look very different without this, without this part. So we can, as a community, be very proud um, to, have, to have achieved this. So we not only achieved that, but we also um, were able to create a very strong BPM community. And I think that's, a, that's an important point, that it's not, not just about, let's say, the research result, it's the people who, who work in this area, it's the people who meet regularly at conferences, and um, mainly also at this conference, because it's always nice to see, to see the, the BPM community assembling year by year uh, to, a, to a very large extent at the BPM conferences. We also had, right from, from the start, or at a quite early stage, we we're thinking about, well, it's nice to have this strong community. Um, how about neighboring fields? It started as a very focused conference, but very soon we thought it would be nice to open to, to, to neighboring fields. So we had the feeling that actually we were not covering the complete BPM space. And now it's, of course, the point in time where I talk a little bit about the broadening. So we had the feeling that there are neighboring disciplines that could also be part of the BPM community, maybe of the broader BPM community, if you like. So we, we thought that it's not just what we did, but it's also the other things. And if you look at this, um, at this sketch, of course, a very abstract sketch just to motivate where, where, I'm, where I'm up to, um, there are, let's say, things left and right that I think we also need, need to consider. Um, also, that is not uh, new. I was um, uh, I have uh, dug out an old an old slide, really from the from the way back, um, and I was uh, creating that slide in the context of uh, of writing the first BPM or the the first edition of the BPM book that came out in 2007. I was writing um, also in 2006, maybe also even a bit earlier. Um, and I, when you when you write a textbook, you really need to step back and think what's in the textbook and for whom do you actually write it and what are the things that, that we really want to cover there and what are the parties involved. So I, I thought a little bit about what is a community and maybe it's not just one community but it's a number of related communities that uh, come together that are interested in that topic. Um, and that's an old slide with old, word, with old terms. So today we were the terms would look a bit different but maybe the structure would not be so very different. So we, we can make two, let's say, two areas. Uh, we can identify two, uh, two areas, sub-communities, if you like. On the left-hand side, you have the IT computer science uh, community. 
Um, and on the right-hand side, you have the more the business or administration, I call that. Today, we would call it management, um, management community that are both interested um, in BPM, but on from very different angles. If we now think that the computer science or IT people are a coherent set of people talking the same language and interested in the same concept and the same issues, um, I don't think that is entirely correct. You can identify a number of sub-communities, so people who were interested in, in formal aspects of systems, in, a formal, in formal models, in formal specification, um, in languages, in the properties of system, and this is, of course, soundness was it, um, is a, is a, let's say, classic property of, of workflow nets or, in, or in general of process models. Um, are these people interested in software architectures? in interfaces between, between system and service invocation, in microservice we would call today? Probably not. Probably not. Probably that's a, a different focus that we have here. So the software, on the, in the software uh, technology, software engineering side, we are interested in something like software architectures, what are suitable software architectures for BPM systems, um, what are the interfaces between the systems, what are the, what's, the what's the behavior of the system maybe, but also what is, what is uh, which data are being shipped around. Middleware SOA, that was a 2006 uh, term, we would call it cloud computing, or maybe we could call it blockchain. To, well, blockchain is a different thing. Blockchain would also be part of this, um, let's say, software stack if we think about using blockchain to, to implement, let's say, process interactions. And basically, it's, um, it's different, different technologies, different methods used here, and also different um, areas of interest. The right hand side, I'm not the, uh, as you know, I'm not the uh, expert in, in this uh, right hand side entirely. Maybe this information systems view. So here we have I'm interested in, in models to represent um, behavior and organizational aspects, in the methods, and uh, also methodologies, how to use things, how to, um, how to let's say, implement things in, in the, uh, an organization. Enterprise architectures is a topic here that I listed here in this information systems part. And the organizational aspect that is more on the, let's say on the management side, things like key performance indicators, policies, or the introduction and the introduction of, um, let's say, BPM uh, systems in organizations. So I think this, is a, this shows a little bit today we would use different terms, but I think it shows a little bit, let's say, the, the, the breadth of the, um, the, breadth of the, of the area. And um, we also see that different methods are used in these, in these different silos, if you want, and also the, the area of interest, the, the object of, the artifact of interest is uh, not always the same, but still they can all be related to, to the BPM area. Now, in this context, or after these uh, observations, um, I'd like to come to some, um, to some resulting observations. The first is that um, not all areas of BPM are really represented at BPM at, at this conference over the years, um, and some colleagues find it hard to enter. I mean, this is, uh, this is a property of a very selective and high-quality conference, so it's, that's, I mean, gen general property. But still, um, we observe that uh, especially, um, especially colleagues from different areas, uh, not from the core BPM areas, um, sometimes find it hard to enter, the, enter this conference, especially so from these related areas. Um, also, over the years, we have the, I have the feeling that the evaluation criteria of, of the conference uh, shifted a little bit. Um, and that is perfectly okay, because if you have a living organism, if you have a dynamic system, you always have evolution, you always have change. So there's nothing, nothing bad about that. So the I think the evaluation criteria have really changed over the years. Um, some people say that BPM tends now, nowadays, to ask for 16-page journal papers, it's also some of the, uh, in line with some of the observation of the, of the PC chairs, um, that the expectations of the reviewers are, tend to be very strong um, in, in recent years, and that uh, led to the situation also described, described by, the, by the program chairs. All right, so what do you do if you want to have uh, your paper accepted at BPM? Well, it's a good idea to position it at the core of, of the BPM area, so right in the middle of this, right? so right in the center of this. It's uh, um, important to position it in that way. If you are 
successful in doing that if you convince um, the reviewers, if you convince the PC member and the PC ch C chairs, ultimately um, things are fine, you, 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 uh, you made it. If not, this happens. Yeah. You might get an out of scope reject, that's not, B that's not BPM. We all, uh, many of us seen, let's say, um, uh, in their reviews, these, uh, oh, it's a nice, inter important, interesting topic, but is it really BPM? Probably it's not BPM and uh, it should therefore be rejected. We also ask for strong theoretical conceptual findings, so new concepts, evaluation of new concepts. If you have that, very nice, but if you, uh, if you don't have it, if you look at related fields that are not so strong in the, let's say, technical content, in the uh, technical findings, you might read this, or the paper doesn't have a technical contribution, reject. It's also something that is, uh, has been written in BPM reviews over the years. The th third thing that um, is asked for is empirical evaluation. So if you do have an empirical evaluation, very nice. If you don't have it, no empirical evaluation, reject. And that's, uh, that's asking for all papers for all of those is, uh, is very tough, and that led to the uh, this, um, this narrowing um, a little bit. On the other hand, you should, of course, um, have papers that are in core in BPM. You should, paper, you should have papers with st uh, strong theoretical findings. You should have papers with empirical evaluation. But not necessarily each paper needs a conjunction of, of those three, I'm convinced. So talk a little about the empirical evaluation. Um, empirical evaluation is a cornerstone of good research. So it's, um, it's important w to study and um, to study properties of artifact that we designed in context. Um, so, so design uh, science paradigm has been around since many years now, and I think it's an important, an important contribution to, to design artifacts, to evaluate these artifacts in, uh, in context. But if you it might also kill innovation. It might also kill uh, new uh, innovative approaches that are just not ready for the evaluation, for the, for the, let's say, being used in a concrete business context. Uh, and uh, that, that might, might be the case. So if you, just, if, you, if you come up with an innovation, with a new idea, you want to, um, you want to let's say, you, you look at it and you propose it, and um, we cannot expect an empirical evaluation at this point in time. Traditionally, it's not our core competency. Um, so traditionally, BPM comes from the more formal side, more, um, let's say, uh, or maybe also conceptual side, in the area of Petrinet, so BPMM a little bit, a bit, a little bit later. But in that area, not, let's say, uh, not our core competency to, to devise an excellent empirical um, evaluation. Um, that might lead to two things. So we are not necessarily the experts in, in writing. Uh, we might also not be the experts in evaluating that. So if you, in, in reviewing, we might see situations like, okay, there is no empirical evaluation of this new concept. So that's a good reason for rejecting. Otherwise, if you have that, um, it's okay. So if there's an empirical evaluation, we are fine and we go ahead with the paper. Um, that, that might uh, lead to empirical evaluation that look a little bit like that. So I asked my students and 73% of my students would use my approach. So that's a nice way of looking at this. So it must be a good approach. Um, we also had a discussion in the, uh, in the steering committee and we were, um, of course, uh, discussing also these, these facts, and um, I, think I think Marlon put the question, so, mm, we will have another test of time award, so that will be delivered um, during the conference dinner tonight. And the question was, would the test of time award papers be really accepted today at the conference? And um, the answer is maybe not, maybe not, um, because they didn't, uh, let's say, they, they weren't strong in all the fields, in especially in empirical evaluation. Okay, now this has um, implications to, to BPM conference, this observation. And I, I um, um, maybe sound a bit more, more concerned than I actually am, so because I like to make the point here. Um, there are also excellent empirical evaluation in this conference presented, um, so uh, maybe this 
this little disclaimer uh, at this point. Uh, I might sound a bit more concerned than I, I actually am, but I think that these are things that address, that still address a problem. So what I said, maybe um, if we accept only papers with a strong empirical evaluation, we might kill papers with novel ideas. And I think we as a, as a conference, we need uh, novelty and we also need to be broad. We need new ideas. Um, and um, otherwise, if we, if we stick with the same ideas and optimize things, we, we run the risk of being too narrow and uh, of losing relevance at some point in time. And also we have to accept the fact that not all BPM papers actually make it to a business environment. Um, so w when, we, when we ask for evaluation in a business context, that implicitly assumes that we want the results to be applicable in a business environment. Um, and I think that's asking uh, too much in general because um, we might want to work on things that are, let's say, years ahead of what industry wants and not just uh, weeks ahead. So I have a little uh, placative way here. We have to be five years ahead of industry, not, not five weeks. And if we, if we look now at what we heard also in the, in the keynote yesterday, um, that compliance checking is now really has been arriving in industry, then exactly we talk about this five year span, if you want. So this, this really happens and we, we do that um, and we, we, need to, we need to stick to this being ahead and trying to come up with novel ideas. Research is for creating knowledge, so it's about, my perspective is about extending the circle that we have, making new dents on, this, on the circle of, of human knowledge. Um, and not necessarily for um, creating products in the short term, not for creating revenue, but for creating uh, knowledge at this point. These insights, or the, the insights up in I was discussing now, are really not new, so we have seen them um, really before. Um, and also we as a steering committee, we discussed how to, how to counter uh, these types of developments and how to, to broaden the conference. There were many things that we were that we were uh, introducing over the years. So, um, and it was quite early that we had PC chairs from different fields, <coughs> from uh, service-oriented architectures, uh, from software engineering, we had and we have a uh, chair. Um, we also added then PC members from these different fields, so each PC chair also introduces new PC members from his or, or her area, that is um, perfectly okay, and that was, that was intended by that. Um, we came up with the concept of a senior PC to um, have a, let's say, second level of reviewing to, to write the meta review and to discuss also the, um, the, individual, uh, the individual reviews and to come up with something like a consolidated um, uh, evaluation of the paper and also to avoid this out of scope out of scope problem. Uh, that's not BPM problem. And also a bit more recently we looked at or introduced topic champions or specific um, areas and persons um, personally responsible for submission in these, in these areas. And um, so all of them worked. All of them had a, had a positive effect. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it was a, it was not a not a huge effect. This was rather a small effect that, that these uh, that these uh, things had. It had a positive effect, but uh, not necessarily what we wanted to achieve with it. And I think the reason for that is um, uh, is that basically we had these different structures. But what happens is that the papers that we that we received were still thrown into one bucket. So all the papers that we had from the different areas are thrown into this single, one single bucket. Um, and so the evaluation criteria for all papers were then the same. Even if they would come from different topic areas, if they would come from different fields, that might have different, um, with where different evaluation criteria um, might be applicable. And so the insight is not new. We were working on this before, but um, the conclusion is new in the sense that in order to increase the diversity also of the accepted BPM papers, some paper we need to accept that some papers are in the core BPM area, some are in related fields. 
or in the, in the broader BPM area, some papers introduce new theoretical findings, other uh, extend existing theoretical findings and um, evaluate their, um, their value empirically. But some might also not really look at new technical contributions, but they would look at the business value of a certain finding. So what is, a, what is the impact of a certain um, algorithm, a certain, certain method, a certain, um, certain new artifact uh, from a business perspective? And I feel that we need different evaluation criteria for